This address here is 32 Peenbar Park Road, Willow Vale in Queensland. Now this address here has been used, or well, it's come up many a time in APSIC searches associated with directors, secretaries and shareholders. Now I'm just going to read a list of how this address is associated with people. Now previously with Adrian Brennock, he was the previous director and secretary, sole previous director and secretary of Mount Burrell Commercial. This address was res registered as his address when he was director. Likewise, he was the previous director, secretary, sole again of Nyepi until six days before his final bankruptcy hearing and it then became the current address for Christy Brannock, sole director and secretary and shareholder of Nyepi. Uh, it's also the address for uh, the shareholder of Nyepi now. It used to be Adrian Brennock uh, in the Cannabis Industries Australia, but now it is for Nyepi as Adrian Brennock was replaced out with um, Nyepi. So that before his bankruptcy, he had to get rid of his name off any, any companies. So yes, he moved them. And so did others that helped him to do that at that time. Uh, but I won't get into that right now. So, also, this address has been used for uh, the, again, previous director secretary of Nightcap Village, previous director secretary of Wollumbin Horizons. Twice he's been used as that because at the beginning and near the end, he's been appointed director and he's used that as also the shareholder in Wollumbin Horizons, sole shareholder of one share. And currently, um, under Nyepi, as the Director Secretary, oh, um, yes, as Nyepi, uh, this is the, where a Director Secretary of Rainmaker Eco, which is, um, the Freedom Summits Association, where someone associated with that used to live. Then uh, this address also is associated with Boundary Property Toowoomba, which has been deregistered again uh, very closely around the time of uh, Adrian Brannock's bankruptcy and in two, August 2018. But uh, the director, secretary and shareholder that's listed is Christy Brannock for Boundary Properties. Now it's Boundary Properties that is said is owed 154000 by Wollumbin Horizons because she lent it to her husband or her husband's company. Uh, that is supposedly the way it, the story goes anyway. So, and it, as I said before, it is currently the address of the sole director, secretary and shareholder of Nyepi, except after it transferred from Adrian Brannock to Christy Ann Brannock. So this address in Queensland uh, is, can be found to be listed through the ATSIC searches from at least March 2017 as to be associated with uh, Adrian and Christy Brennock and all the shareholder directorships, secretaryships and everything associated with that address. Now the reason I'm bringing up when this address started to be used by the Brennocks uh, at least early 2017 was before the voluntary uh, winding up was done to Wollumbin Horizons. That was to come a few months down the track. However, that Adrian Brannock and Mark Darwin had been threatening all the investors that were causing a stir that it had already been done. So a lot of the, the past lost investors that got kicked out with nothing 
were working with the belief that that it had already been put into liquidation and it hadn't actually been done. It was only when people started to, um, people like Nicole that had been mentioned in the previous um, Vox of Adrian Brannock and other professionals. Nicole was a, a lawyer until Adrian Brannock started to decide that, you know, he would fuck her over good not only take her money but also take her career and that's how in the previous video you were talking you heard him talking about specifically targeting Nicole and fucking her over and keeping her in endless litigation and suing her insurer because he knew that because she was a lawyer she would have public liability insurance and she's diligent in her job, she would carry that. I'm not sure any of these people would understand what diligence is about, but yes, she would have had public liability insurance for being in the legal profession, and that is something that he clearly defined that he was going to target getting money back out of that insurance because of what he did to the company, but he's going to blame others that he did. Well, he, he's a priceless one, this AB, isn't he? You know, when he says this thing about AB, you know, and he talks about how putting it in front of things, you know, make it abnormal. Well, you know, it is there in plain sight. His name is Ab, AB. He is abnormal. I don't think there are many people out there that can brag so proudly of that one of my skills is fucking people over and I'm really good at it you know and I make sure I never lose any money out of it I always make a lot and you consider that this place was up for sale in 2016 when investors were paying money in where did your money go hmm. I think it might have ended up helping to pay for this address here Adrian Brennock certainly seems to have quite an attachment to it because after he started to bring it on and smash people from every other angle, he suddenly thought, well, hang on, what if they come after my mansion? See, at this stage he hadn't been made a bankrupt, but he's probably, uh, by the end of 2017, fast approaching where... Uh, He's either been served with six months to pay his debt off by the ATO or there have been investigations that he's been aware of that he realises that where he's bragged all these people about how he's got away with all this stuff, he hasn't. The ATO came down on him. He's also said that people made him government agencies, made him sign, I will never speak in public again. This is not a success that's a failure and so not only as a bankrupt and breaching the agreements he says that he's made what else has he done he's promoting taking in investors money as a bankrupt and that is just the least of what is going on and that's bad enough so I'm just going to let you listen to this um, Vox here where Adrian Brennock is, well, I'll let him speak for himself. Hello, General Fourway. Um, Hello, General Yeah, definitely my thought and I've already sent it out, so it's all good. Um, given that I'm a predatory cunt, um, and I use that as an term of endearment, of course, um, it's it's been apparent to me for a little while, but it's becoming more and more apparent to me um, that essentially the, the the importance of my house to this whole structure is really fucking crucial now. So getting this step up into the high court ceases the court action for that. It ceases the court action for Fred. It ceases the court action for Nicole. Should she start anything stupid? But moving forward, thinking of how this actually works, 
is that it's CESA. So, so we didn't pay the three mil to Peter von Leisch out for whatever reason, or you know, he turns out to be a prick. It takes us to court to wind up the option agreement. Well, that can't, that can't happen until that's heard in court as well. So three to five years or permanent limbo is a really interesting situation because I talked about, you know, being an octopus and we lat -ratch, latch ourselves around the, the plaintiff as much as we can. So while well, they're fighting one arm, you know, you've got eight others or nine others or fucking ten others or, you know, depending on how many octopus there are, just going nuts. So I think we should attach ourselves all over these sorts of deals, bring Gunnam in as the tribal stuff. That then ties him to the deal. If the other side gets the shits and decides to go to court, boom, fucking high court challenge. Thanks very much. And we don't even need to do a high court challenge on breach of constitution. We just need to attach the the the, um, the action to the high court action. So essentially, we just have a treaty claim on every single treaty argument on every single deal that we do moving forward, and they're fucked. So I'm sort of thinking from that perspective, yeah, Von Leishard ain't getting out of anything, even if that option... Even if he tries to, to, to force the option and go to court, he can't. <laughs> so we've actually got him completely wrapped up by uh, the short and curlies. So as long as we get through and get me into the high court with this this challenge. So uh, anyway, Zoltan's finished the documents. Um, uh, we're just putting touches on the, the service for the other side, and it's going to be ready to go to Gunham tonight, get approved overnight, hopefully... Uh, May May from Narakpul will sign it or actually sign a letter that goes with it. And then, um, yeah, we're driving up to lodge it and um, file it with the court on Friday, uh, Thursday. So, there you go, there are Jimmy's. You're all up to date, uh, lads and lasses. Well, well, you heard him say how his house is crucial to the project. All right, it's only the address where directors and secretaries are said to live and shareholders are said to live. Uh, how is that crucial when it's, well, it's a mansion. It doesn't look like it's doing much business other than mansioning luxury for uh, the people that live there. <laughs> and besides me, how crucial is a house in Queensland to the project in New South Wales? Uh, yes, he's he's worried that, oh, I've worked all this to get this house and I've done all this work to, you know, funnel money from here to there and to get this place. And he's suddenly, yeah, he's worrying about that it might come back on him and he might lose it. So he's been putting his head into how can I frustrate things? How can I outlast outmaneuver and frustrate. Well, you know, I hope that uh, Peter Van Leishout hears these videos. I hope he was listening to the last one when he was being talked about, about being used as a, you know, a cash cow and holding pretty much you in a position of, I don't know, I'd be borderline thinking of the word blackmail. He's even bragged in this one about having you by the short and curlies. There's nothing you sh you could do if they didn't pay you the three million dollars that they agreed to. Now, I wonder if that's part of what I understand is going down on the 18th of November this year. It's not only settlement date for three triple two, the day when the lease is supposed to be handed over at the general store. But apparently it's got something to do with this lease and money that is owed, as AB just mentioned in that Vox, about, you know, if PVL came against us and, you know, because we didn't pay the three million. Well, isn't that interesting? Because it has been a rather tenuous relationship in that there are people that have come forward and said that the $300,000 that Nightcap on Minjimble saved in legal fees was thanks to Emon Lowe, and he got a share in Nightcap on Minjimble for it. Derek Zillman saved them by resolving problems. 
And in understanding that Derek Zillman puts himself out to represent the majority landowner of this whole development, Peter Van Lyshout, and yet cannot produce to any valid shareholders and other people that he's dealing with, the ones that end up getting, you know, having everything chucked at them and in litigation for the rest of their lives, tie them all up in in endless knots so that nobody can expose what they're doing because they're too busy fighting off what is being done to them because this guy has got the skills for fucking people over. And he loves doing it. He's good at it. He's a sick MFO. What I thought was very interesting from listening to that conversation too was though that how as part of this plan to secure his mansion and protect himself and to get him in the high court, he intends to use the tribal people and get them to sign documents to support tribal and sovereignty claims. And it's interesting when OB says that when, and he says that will lock him in or words to that effect. Yeah, very interesting his choice of words when he says things. Like when I was uh, watching the video of the Freedom Summits where he was speaking in the background with Mark Darwin. Sorry, I keep getting interruptions and uh, I forgot what I was saying. So let's start afresh. I suppose I've pretty much said as much as what I can say and this is um, why is it so important for Adrian Brennock to protect his mansion as a bankrupt. He's not a bankrupt when he's trying to protect it but uh, he's certainly trying to protect it from it being seized because of his actions and he's attempting to block any actions that might come against him before people have a chance to even do it. I mean, at every step of the way, he has set out to deliberately, what is it, outlast, outmaneuver and frustrate. And that's just, you know, in what he says publicly. But what he says when he thinks that he's not going to be held accountable to those that are well, above the standard of bottom feeder. You know, most people are going to hear these conversations and be abhorred that this is, that he's having these thoughts and he's acted on them. He's ripped people off, but that's not enough. He's going to ruin them for as long as he can and he's going to frustrate them and he's going to enjoy it because it's one of his major skills. But isn't that nice how he says, given that I'm a predatory cunt, and I use that as a term of endearment? Since when has a predator been a term of endearment? And tell me, those that you have preyed on, do they think it's very endearing? Uh, I don't think they'd think it's very endearing at all. In fact, I think bottom feeder would actually be a kind name for you. There is much, much worse. But when you're sitting in this mansion, after you've probably paid with it from everybody else's um, <laughs> loss, you know, you're sitting back king on your hill. How is this crucial to the nightcap on Minjimbu? This is a mansion in Queensland. A nightcap on Minjimbu is sacred country bordering on national parks and everything in New South Wales. How is, there, how is this house, AB's house, crucial? It's not crucial to the project. It's crucial to his comfort. That's all. And for a bankrupt that uh, owes 
so many people, I don't think he deserves much more comfort than, you know, how big's a prison cell? And he'll get that permanent address for a few years. He won't have to worry about it. that being crucial that someone might take it off him. He just might have to worry about bending over for the soap, eh? Hey? <laughs> I have mentioned too that uh, Nyepi, it, this is their registered address. And they are also major shareholders in other businesses, being the Mount Burrell Commercial, one of them, through Rainmaker Developments. And there are a lot of connections coming up now with Nyepi, and all of these are showing that they were changed around the time of Adrian Brannock's final bankruptcy hearing. While he was under service of a bankruptcy notice, and he deliberately hid these things to avoid it being taken up in bankruptcy, as would the house that he's bought with all his ill-gotten gain. That would have gone. And he's outsmart... Well, so far he thinks he's outsmarted that because his bankruptcy hasn't arrived yet. But the fact that he's still in this house after his bankruptcy, one can only imagine the fancy footwork that he's done, what scheme he's plotted and come up with, in his given that he's a predatory cunt and he'll find a way to fuck people over and come out on top no matter what and no matter who suffers for it you know like why don't we hear anything about Zoltan this um, lawyer that helped them all out in back then what did they do to him why has he disappeared off the scene stone lawyers that invested in it they invested 120000 in it and a $300,000 debt that a bill from them miraculously disappeared, as did Stone Lawyers. And now they've got other lawyers on the scene, other people playing. And I'm just wondering how long it is before you get put out to pasture too. You know, you have to understand that prof some professional services are very expendable, especially um, lawyers and accountants that cannot be that good at their job but just barely pass to get a licence. You know, they're a dime a dozen. And you dangle a carrot, you know, like this, oh, nightcap on Minjimble, look at it. And all these dollar signs go clicking across in their eyes and they just can't wait. And they're so wrapped up in the bullshit sales pits that just got spun that they don't realise that they've just been put on the list to be the next one to fall. And I just wonder how much their current lawyers and legal team have been booking up in fees that, well, settlement on this property that's supposed to go to an outside purchaser but is going back to the community somehow. They've got to come up with uh, full price of that by the end of um, 18th of November apparently or the whole project the one that you know 3222 that's the property that everything hinges around not this um, mansion in Queensland so this whole development if 3222 is indeed sold to a foreign purchaser that will not continue on the development or is under the control of the development they are falsely advertising that they have any development to sell anyone. So which, you know, which is it that this 3222 does not ha currently have an owner? It's in limbo, waiting for settlement on the 18th of November, along with the lease of the only person left paying any rent back for the shops in the Mount Burrow Commercial. Who's paying any rent on all those commercial buildings? Who? What income is coming back and going back to the investors? Or are you just going to say that that tough period, that's why that 3.75 million worth of shareholders' uh, monies is just gone down to zero because you had to write out a rough patch? This is a rough patch that your decisions have made. 
As a director and secretary, Philip Dixon, you are responsible for the condition that Mount Burrell Commercial is in. And the fact that you can't even provide proper records to shareholders, yes, I've been speaking to them. <laughs> you are not upholding your trust duty. Uh, but then again, which one of these ones playing at the top of the, the pyramid are? All their pa bad paperwork is an excuse to cover things. I mean, come on. If it was proper paperwork, everybody would know that what they were doing and they might as well just go and walk into jail and say, I'll sit here for the next 20 years. Are we serious in that there's a reason that keeping proper records is required by law and it's not a bloody excuse. It's required. It's not an option. And, oh, you're dealing with millions and millions and millions of other people's money and... You're going to take it, treat it as an option to keep proper records, to know where the money's going? Well, they don't want you to know where the money's going. You'd find out where it had been going, and you, Adrian Brennock, would not be in that house for a start. I dare say most of the investors would then have a big slice of what they've lost back. Well, maybe one round. Because didn't you say in the previous Vox... Literally, we will be in voluntary administration with our first development and we're selling the second one on stage. I don't know how we are going to get round that one. Well, I don't know either because there are court statements saying that you aren't the same. You argued in court. You perjured in court. And yet that confession says you knew you perjured. All the same people were involved in the first development, in the second one. And you're selling the second one as you're trying to rip off all the past investors by putting Wollumbin Horizons into liquidation so that they can't get anything back out of it. And you've described how you wanted to do that too. Well, I think it's time that um, people actually listen to what Adrian Brennock has been talking like and ask yourself, is this a man that means no harm? He's um, true to volition, coming back to country? <laughs> really? How is it that anyone is buying any of this? Hmm. Well, I suppose we've all been fooled by con men, haven't we? But, you know, it's kind of like fool me once, fool on you, fool me twice, fool on me. You know? <laughs> Come on. Words out of his own mouth. He's told you that there's only one important thing to him. That's his house, his mansion and his own little world. Nightcap can go through first development, second one, third one, fourth one. But what's crucial to it all is that the guy at the top making sure it all goes on the way he plans, well, he doesn't lose out. And he's been good at fucking people over to make sure he doesn't. And just how many people are going to let themselves be fucked over? Peter Van Lyshout, seriously, you need to get on board with all the previous lost investors. They've got stacks of stuff on these guys. You want help? <laughs> oh, seriously, you're not going to get any money out of them. I do believe you're expecting some on the 18th of November too. Is that what Derek Zillman promised you? Is that what he told you? I think you should question what Derek Zillman is telling you. I think you need to bypass <laughs> the middleman. In fact, I think you need to bypass them altogether. You need to get independent advice and you need to get out. I know that you are tied up on the land side of it. And that's what AB's talking about too. 
you sign an agreement that you want to get out of, but they're going to tie you up so that you can't, and then they're going to keep milking you and milking you. If, if you haven't listened to those audios, you should. As I tell you, well, I, <laughs> when I first started looking at this, I actually thought, well, you know, he, he's an older guy, and he's got a fair bit of money, and maybe he's just getting sucked in. And then I thought, mm, no, nah, maybe he's not so innocent. But the more and more I'm hearing from Adrian Brannock, the more I'm realising that he's getting just as screwed over as anybody else. There's only a few of them that aren't. And they're going <laughs> to... Well, Cherie Stokes is one of them. She's not getting screwed over. Neither's Philip Dixon. Neither's Mark McMurtry. Neither's Derek Silman. I don't know, something might have gone on with Michaela Lowe and Eamon Lowe. But um, they were in on it too before, I don't know, maybe they're the latest ones like Darwin to get thrown under the bus. Well, you just never know, do you? When you mix up with crooks, you just don't know how they'll sell you out to save their own ass. I'm going to leave it on that note and say, catch you next time. <laughs>